Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. So today I want to start a new series on the Karakan. I'm going to be talking about the advanced variation. This is going to be a two-part series. Uh, the first part is going to talk about um, the um, C5 variation, so the Bodvinik Karls variation. And the next one is going to be about the main line, which is the third move, Bishop F5. So um, yeah, first off, before starting this, I want to mention that um, I'm going to make, like, I'm definitely going to make mostly English speaking videos. Um, the last video did like really well, like in two weeks, it got like 5,000 views, which is like completely insane. Like that's more than all of my other videos, uh, all of the views from my other videos combined, I think, but still I prefer making English, English videos. Um, yeah, just because that's, um, uh, my, my main language of comfort and, um, so yeah, uh, yeah, just don't worry about that. I'll probably just make some, um, yeah, some Indonesian speaking videos in between there. But uh, for the most part, I'm still gonna continue making my type of videos, which is theory based um, and also improvement based. Uh, but yeah, without further ado, let's just get right into the variation. So we're gonna enter the Karakan with C65 and then E5 here. Now, um, we're gonna talk about C5 here, which is the second most common move. I think uh, this has gained a lot of popularity recently. Um, because it basically tries to get out of a lot of the theory um, that you can find in the bishop f5 variation. And talking a bit about this uh, variation, it was first played, I think, by, um, or I think the second person who, to ever play this variation in 1921 was Carl uh, Karls, um, who is an interna uh, international master from Germany back in like the 20s uh, to 30s. He was active back then. And I think he was, he also has another opening uh, name after him, which is the McInnes Carls variation, if you know that in, in the English opening. Um, yeah, and it's also known as the Botvinnik Carls because Botvinnik played it against Tal in their 1961 World Championship match. And he didn't do so great in that match uh, with this uh, variation. Uh, I think he lost one and drew two. But uh, yeah, either way, I think um, that definitely sparked some popularity in this variation. And so... Here, um, the main move is by far to take on c5 here, and I think it's the most principled way. Um, so first off, uh, the reason that black wants to play c5 is that they um, is that possibly the bishop, uh, unlike in the main line where you play bishop f5 here, uh, the, the bishop on f5 um, is often like a kind of vulnerable um, to like knight f3, knight h4, or um, basically um, black may deem it more useful if the bishop was to um, go to g4, uh, for example, if the knight was on f3. So if we go to c5 and then after dc5, and if we play like, uh, let's say, knight c6 and the knight f3 here, then already black has the move bishop g4. And I think this is like the main idea where black should be completely fine in this variation. I don't see any uh, serious problems if uh, black plays this correctly. Okay, so... Um, Actually, this is me from the future because I'm editing this video now and I realized that I didn't actually make a, uh, a summary about like the lines and the reason that I chose the lines um, and the thematic ideas in, the, in this variation. So I want to do this now and uh, present this in the beginning of the video. Um, so you will see the general approach that, um, that uh, I will take and what will take in this variation. Um, so after c5, dc5 is definitely the most um, appropriate. And remember against knight c6, we always play f4. And uh, in general, if black pushes the d4 pawn further after e6, bishop e3, and then once black pushes the pawn, uh, this pawn will be weak. The e4 square will be uh, weak also to be able to put a knight there. We can continue with a3 and then uh, possibly bishop d3. And we can consider even not putting the knight on f3, but we can also consider knight on uh, queen f3. Um, yeah, for example, in this situation where we play castles. And so that's, in general, uh, what you should do against knight c6. And against e6, uh, and we should play a3 here uh, to keep some options available, queen g4. Um, and here against knight c6, then I recommend knight f3. And against bishop c5, b4, we will place the bishop on b2 and then bishop d3. And in general, uh, in the uh, Botvin and Carl's variation, if we take control over the e5 square and get a massive rear upon it, uh, then we will be very happy and we should have a significant, um, at least, um, pull on the position. Um, and um, Black's main source of counterplay um, in general uh, from this variation after bishop c5, um, or actually after knight c6, um, knight f3, bishop c5, 
be four, bishop b6 here, is try to go for knight g7, knight g6, castles, and then try to go for f6 uh, to undermine the pawn center. And we also know that the bishop on b6 is quite good uh, to put pressure on f2. But overall, the complications, I think, favor white, and white definitely has a slightly preferable position. Uh, there are some things to know about this f6 move, uh, this early f6 move, where we will play the move knight bd2, a very clever move order, I think. And um, I guess knight g7, again, the, as I've mentioned, we will play, um, okay, first off, knight bd2. Um, it's a very nice move order, um, which I will explain further uh, along across this, yeah, in this video. Um, and in general, again, if we maintain control of the e5 square, then we will be able to um, claim at least a slight advantage, even under all the complications. So, um, yeah, you can just continue watching the theory of this video. Um, there's a lot of it. So, um, yeah, just grab your popcorn and we're gonna jump right into the variations. If you wanna, like, just try out, uh, yeah, this variation without knowing the theory, it's quite risky, um, but I hope that with this short few minute um, TLDR, you can like um, at least get the basic ideas uh, surrounding this variation. Um, and essentially that's the main idea. Um, so after C5, there are a couple of moves that we could try here. Um, just a few of them. C3 is actually no good because black can essentially get the advanced French variation, um, but the light square bishop is already outside the pawn chain, which is definitely not what we want to do. So for example, after knight c6, knight f3, cd4, takes, takes, and bishop g4, already black does very well here. We can see all of the games in the master database. White hasn't won zero games, and it's quite clear why. Uh, yeah, I mean, the bishop's already out, um, and the d4 pawn can be a liability in the future. Uh, so c3 is not good. And knight f3 is a fairly uh, new discovery um, that... Uh, I'm not going to recommend, but I think it's quite uh, interesting. And maybe theory will uh, develop further, but um, as of right now, I think it's still unclear um, what happens after cd4, queen d4, knight c6, and the queen f4, which is definitely an interesting way to play. Uh, and the computer says that white has a tiny advantage here, but this is relatively unexplored territory. For example, a uh, line could go like, for example, this. And um, we're following a game by Max Warmerdam. And yeah, we, we get this position, which is quite interesting, but uh, definitely not um, clear yet uh, about what the, theoretical, what the theoretical situation is there. So maybe we'll see it in be the main line in like another 20 years or something. Um, so yeah, d takes e5 is definitely the most principled move here. And um, black can try a variety of moves, but e6 by far is the best move. I think that any other move is just no good here. A move like bishop f5 uh, already just loses the pawn because we can play d4, knight c6, bishop b5, and already if you play a5, then c3, and black has absolutely no competition here for the pawn. We can just turn on the engine here, and obviously, um, yeah, black has nothing here. Um, and here after dc5, um, black can try this queen a5 move to try to regain the pawn immediately, but this is definitely not in the spirit of the position. Um, the black queen gets exposed really um, fast in this variation after c3, which we threaten b4 to hold onto the pawn. So queen c5, the bishop e3, and against queen a5 here, I think we can just play knight d2 here, where the queen will be quite vulnerable. Um, we can just continue with knight gf3, bishop d3, and at some point, maybe a move like knight b3 uh, looks quite reasonable. Um, meanwhile, after queen c6, queen c6, which is the best move, uh, we can just play knight d2 here e6 and then knight b3 uh, let's say knight h6 try to go to f5 then after bishop d3 queen c7 f4 knight c6 knight f3 bishop e7 castles this already cl clearly gives white a big advantage um, because black has some problems here um, if knight f5 then we can always take it and the d5 pawn will be weak and black is uh, definitely not going to be happy in this position um, yeah we can already see the computer evaluation there um, and knight c6 here um, is the second most common move. And I think that um, the reason people still play this is that they don't know the refutation uh, is actually the move f4 here. Uh, the problem again is that if we play a move like knight f3, then bishop g4 comes really quickly. And we saw the line before, which is completely fine for, for black. And if we play the move bishop b5 here, which I've done from time to time because I thought this just holds onto the pawn, 
I think that um, black can just play e6 here after bishop e3, knight e7. Uh, black actually prepares knight f5 real, really quickly. And let's say c3, knight f5, bishop d4. We hold on to the pawn for the time being, but uh, after we get this position, a uh, queen takes d4. Uh, at some point, I think that um, at the very least, black can play b6 here and take back with the pawn and open up the a file and prepare for something like bishop c5. And black already has the bishop pair here uh, for one pawn. So this is definitely not, um, I think, yeah, objectively, this doesn't give uh, white anything. And so uh, the move that here that we need to play is to move f4, which just defends the pawn immediately. And here again, um, black can try a variety of things, like queen a5 here. Um, and here after c3, which is very standard, a queen takes e5, b4, queen b6, and then queen takes d5. Um, here, uh, yeah, white just holds on to the pawn, an extra pawn here in the center of the board. And this is still a bit tricky because black does have the bishop pair and the open d file. Uh, but I found that the complications favor white if white knows the uh, correct development scheme here. Um, the, the play here is quite complicated if we see after bishop g4, which is a very good move. It prevents uh, knight f3 because, uh, because yeah, I think just like uh, rook d8 or, or, uh, or just like taking here uh, like knight f3 and then rook d8 would be a serious problem with some initiative. Um, but still, I think with accurate play, white should still be better here. We play queen b5, which is important to try to trade off the queens, which black definitely does not want. And so after queen c7, we prepare, we prepare knight d2. Uh, to play, we prepare knight gf3 by playing knight d2, and um, it doesn't allow black to ruin our structure. And let's say after knight h6, knight gf3, knight f5, bishop e2. Um, the knight on e3 here doesn't actually do anything because we can just play king f2. So let's say after e6, knight c4. We cover the e3 square and white is ready to castle next with a big advantage here just up a pawn and let's say a6 here then we can just play queen b6 with a big advantage and so queen a5 is as per usual not a good move um there's also this move f6 which i've uh, which i've uh, i think it's a novelty but i've just checked with the engine and it says that this is like one of the top engine moves um because the position is already quite dubious for black um, but after f6, I think we can just play knight f3. And if they play knight uh, bishop g4, then we can play c3. And white has a typical, typical tactic here uh, that, uh, so that black cannot take the pawn uh, for free. For example, f5, f5, and knight e5 is obviously a big blunder because of this typical queen sacrifice with bishop e5 coming and black is forced to block with the queen. Uh, so that's a typical tactic. I think no one will fault, fault for that if they are reasonable. <laughs> And after e6, bishop e3, let's say knight h6, bishop b5, pinning the knight, knight f5, and bishop f2. Black again has no compensation for the pawn here. We can just hold on to it and be completely winning here. So this f6 move is a novelty, but um, just uh, yeah, don't be surprised if someone replays it as a surprise weapon or something. Uh, bishop f5 is also no good because it doesn't really put pressure on the c5 pawn. And so after c3, we can just play... Um, b4 next uh so if, yeah, if if we don't play b4 now and i mean if we're prevented that by let's say a5 then here we can play bishop b5 here uh where um we can either play b4 next or play bishop e3 to defend the pawn and black is not in time to regain the pawn here uh also note that the move a5 weakens the b5 square a lot so in general we're, we're quite happy to see that and against knight h6 here, which is quite interesting, it keeps the option of bishop g4 alive um, instead of playing a move like e6. Um, and here we can just play knight f3, and after bishop g4, we play the move bishop d3. Um, the thing is that I don't like about bishop, d bishop e3 is that knight f5 can come with a tempo. And let's say after bishop f2, there's this move g5, which is really nice, undermining the uh, our pawn here, um, which is why I think bishop d3 is best. And if black plays e6, then we play bishop e3, uh, defending the uh, pawn on c5. And here we're going to see a thematic idea that we see in the main line of this knight c6 variation, which is after d4, bishop f2, and bishop takes c5. Black manages to win back the pawn, but the d4 pawn is actually overextended, and it can actually be a target in the future. Um, uh, also, we see in this position that the e4 square is quite weak, which we can typically place a knight on, like knight e2, knight e4. Uh, and additional ideas include like playing a3 here to prevent the knight b4 ideas and the position is actually already 
quite favorable for white. Let's say after h3, queen a5 here. Um, this has been played once, I think, and there is some pressure in the position after knight e2 and then bishop f3. Uh, queen f3 and the bishop b4 here, where uh, if we play a move like rook d1, we just played in the game, then black can already take on a2, and I think white, is sh white should st still be slightly better, but uh, it's not as clear. Uh, and so the solution here is just to play move queen e2. And next move, we're going to play a3 uh, and then rook d1, where we're not actually going to lose a pawn, and we're just going to... Um, make use of the fact that this pawn on d4 is a target and this already should be slightly better for example after knight f5 we can play a3 and after castles rook d1 uh, black is yeah black should probably just take on d2 and then after this rook takes d2 we just castle next and d4 will be a big liability so white is already much better there uh and going back instead of knight h6 uh the move here uh that most people will play is e6 here but so there's this move bishop e3 and we will see that after okay d4 is the main move uh but knight a6 is also, is also a possibility which tries to regain the pawn under favorable circumstances preparing some knight f5 ideas but here we can just develop with knight f3 uh and let's okay we can see after bishop e7 we play knight, knight bd2 where the knight will come to b3 and defend c5 and if f6 happens then we can play bishop e5 which fights over the control over the e5 square uh, because now the knight is not helping uh, let's see after castles, bishop c6, b6, and knight b3. White already has a clear advantage here um, because the c5 pawn is defended and black again cannot um, regain the pawn. Uh, f6 is no good, so let's talk about d4 here. And here we can just play bishop f2. Um, and after bishop takes c5, um, at first glance when analyzing this position, I thought that uh, black kind of uh, is a genius here because they managed to regain the pawn um yeah oh, managed to regain the pawn and uh in the main variation i recommend a move like queen f3 here instead of not the move knight gf3 uh which is which is now obviously the option is taken away from us but i realized that black actually wasted an important tempo here with bishop e7 and the bishop c5 which you typically do not see in the main line and so i think this uh still gives white a big advantage after bishop d3 um yeah preventing any knight f5 ideas uh let's say after knight g4 we just play bishop g1 holding on to the pawn uh holding on to the bishop excuse me and then after castles we play a3 here and again we have a big advantage uh because the e4 square is weak and black has an overextended d4 pawn i think next move we can just play queen e2 and um we can also uh think about kicking this knight away with h3 and i think our position is very very good and so um yeah, that's what happens after d4, I think. Um, how about d4 in this position? It's uh, This gets into some slight complications because uh, black will try to make use of this pin. But after we play c3, I think that white still has the upper hand here. Let's have the castles, queen d2 and queen b6. We have this move bishop d3, which was recommended by Wesley So here. This consolidates the position. And after, okay, I mean, obviously there's, uh, that's not a free pawn because there's always this bishop h7 tactic to win like the queen at the very end uh but after rook d8 we play knight a3 here which is a very nice move to prepare knight c4 and if bishop a3 happens then b3 queen a5 we can just play bishop e4 here which is the i think the best move um yeah and let's see after knight f5 we can play bishop f2 queen a3 in the castles where white is already significantly better uh, more development and um already uh our position of the pawns in the center of the board and the pieces uh, are uh, favorable meanwhile if they play knight takes d4 then we can play an in-between move which is knight c4 um and after queen b5 which is black's best defense now um uh, because um note that we cannot take on d4 with the pawn because there's bishop b4 don't fall into that trick um but after knight c4 queen b5 knight d6 here queen c6 and then bishop e4 is very important uh, and after queen a6 because i think that if we just take on d4 here um yeah there's bishop d6 here and that's obviously not what we want but we play bishop e4 here after queen a6 bishop takes d4 bishop d6 ed6 and then knight f5 um i think taking this pawn is quite dangerous uh queen d6 we can just probably just we can probably just long castle here and rook d6 let's see what the engine thinks a move like queen e2 seems to give seems to give a, a white a big advantage uh, because of the bishop pair and um 
I think it's quite difficult to develop this queen side with um, because b6 is not possible and rook b8 uh, lands uh, bishop e5. So let's say knight f5 here and we just cast along. And note that um, if black decides to take on a2 here, then we can uh, and like give a check on a1, then we can always play bishop e1, which is not a, a problem at all. And so the critical line is here is queen d6, uh, rook d6. And after queen f2, uh, white already has a big advantage here because uh, the advan um, there's already um, some danger in the position with like bishop e5 ideas. Um, and we already have the bishop pair, which is very annoying for black to deal with. Um, so yeah, that covers this line. There are some things to know here with this d4 move, but note that if we play c3 and we can get away with it, then we shouldn't be in any serious danger. And so knight f5 here is um, also reasonable, um, but after bishop f2, queen a5, queen d2, bishop c5, we can trade into this uh, end game here, where we play bishop d3. And I think black, um, I mean black does not seem does not seem at first glance to have any serious um, problems, but uh, the development scheme here for white is very simple. Um, we're gonna play a3, um, rook e1, knight bd2, and even some b4 in the future if possible. And the point here is that the knight on a5 needs to uh, spend another tempo to get back to c6. And I think here we're already threatening to take on uh, f5. Um, so, uh, and just like damage black's pawn structure. So this is quite a strategically dangerous position, I think. Um, yeah, already what should be significantly better. Uh, which is why the main move in this knight c6 variation is the move d4. Um, and after bishop f2, bishop c5. Again, we get the very uh, the same situation essentially, where black has won the pawn, but now the d4 pawn is overextended and the e4 square is weak. And so we can play knight d2 here. Um, so the knight can either come to f3 or uh, we can develop, we can consider developing with bishop d3 and like knight d2 possibly. So this is very flexible. And um, two moves that I've, I've found are like knight h6 and knight g7. Um, I think after knight h6, we can just play a3, which just prevents any knight b4 ideas after bishop d3. And then after castle, bishop d3, I think um, we can stop here already uh, because white has a big advantage with this uh, formation. Um, and after, let's say f6 here, which is quite critical, we can play ef6. Um, something like knight gf3, I think I've played once in a game. And the problem is that there's this fe5, fe5, and then g4 move where the e5 pawn is going to drop. Um, yeah, so this is definitely not what I'm going to recommend. Um, funny thing here is that after castles, my opponent actually did not take on e5 and they played a move like knight e3, which gives white a big advantage because here um, we're going to take an f1. And then there is like, I think my opponent played knight e7, which is a blunder because bishop h7, I think, just wins. Um, yeah, uh, which is quite funny. It's not, I mean, this variation is not good for white because the e5 pawn is hanging, but that's just kind of funny to know. Um, so ef6 here is best, and after queen f6, we play knight e4, gaining a tempo uh, on the queen and the uh, bishop. Um, and after queen takes f4, we can get another tempo with knight h3. And there are two moves here. Queen f5 is, I think, the best. There's uh, Or there's also this move, queen e5. Uh, queen f5 is best because... Um, it doesn't run into any, um, let's say after queen e5, there's bishop g3, gaining, gaining another tempo. After queen d5, knight f4, queen f5, the queen is harassed so many times. And after castles, bishop e7, b4, um, white is already a lot better here, obviously. I mean, I don't know what to say about this position, it's just so good. Um, and after queen f5, uh, we can castle, and the bishop e7, queen knight e g5, uh, with some complications here. Uh, h7 is quite weak, but after let's say queen uh, queen g4, we can play bishop e2 again harassing the queen. Queen f5, bishop d4 with a discovered attack here. Queen d5 and then rook f8, king f8, and bishop f2. Where the end game is significantly better because uh, black has all of these weaknesses um, on h7 and e6, and yeah, white should be able to win this in uh, in the end game. Um, yeah, this is all not forcing uh, by any means, so I think that you can just play the position based on feel um, because the position is quite um, it's quite nice already for white in any of these lines, even without all of this memorization. And instead of knight h6, I think knight g7 is uh, the main move. After which, um, I think Wasiso recommends to move a3 here, uh, 
where um, you actually allow the knight to come to e3. Um, knight d5, queen f queen g4 in the castles, bishop d3, and then f5, and then gets into these kind of complications where the knight will, uh, for example, land on e3. Uh, but white is very, very happy there because the knight on e3 doesn't actually do anything. But I am going to recommend this, this move, queen f3, um, which is a very interesting option. Um, I think it's the top engine move here. Um, and the idea is just to prepare long castles um, and possibly to play the move king b1. Uh, we can play knight e4, we can play uh, knight, d knight e2 to c1 if uh, we need to, if the position gets uh, quite sharp and black is starting to attack us. So I think this queen f3 move is very reasonable. Um, yeah, it supports um, knight e4, which I really like. Um, and the best move here, I think, is 95. And after castles, or this was played once in a game, and like, yeah, already uh, we can see here by uh, 2640 Grandmaster um, just winning a very smooth game in, the, in this uh, sample. You can check out yourself, I think. Queen f3 is not quite nice. Um, so, yeah, that essentially covers this, uh, this line uh, with uh, 96 here. And so we're gonna go into the main bulk of theory, which is after the move e6. And here, uh, I think I'm gonna recommend the move a3, which gives black uh, gives white some additional options. Because if we play the move knight f3, this uh, blocks the queen's root to g4, which may be a variation that we wanna look into after uh, a3, like bishop c5, queen g4, which is again recommended by Wesley. So, um, but if we play knight f3 here, then after bishop c5, uh, bishop d3, knight c6. This is fairly reasonable and it is strategically dangerous for black to enter this position because there's always the risk of getting attacked this e5 pawn may be a uh, something that um, black needs to worry about uh but um after castles knight g7 okay i've gone into this variation just a little bit and i found it to be quite reasonable for black after knight g6 and black is going to castle and possibly possibly play f6 next and i think um Already, this is uh, quite fine for black. Um, and so here, I'm going to recommend move a3. And we're going to look at a bunch of moves here. Uh, a5 looks at first glance to be quite reasonable, preventing any b4 ideas. Uh, but this weakens the b5 square um, significantly. And we can just play knight c3 here. Um, and after bishop c5, um, we can play the thematic move queen g4, uh, where g7 is under attack. And if black plays something like bishop f8, then we can continue with center development. But if king f8, then we can play again bishop d3, knight c6, knight f3, and this is already clearly much better for white. Black does not want to enter this kind of position. And let's say after knight e7, knight g7, castles, knight g6, we can play rook e1 and h5, queen g3, h4, queen g4. And even though king, the queen is being kicked around quite a bit, um, already the g6 knight is actually... Um, uh, loses its support quite a bit and we can see after knight c7 bishop g5 queen b6 rook f1 uh, defending the f2 pawn and here um yeah black cannot take on b2 because on account of knight e4 just trapping the queen um but uh, or, or at least winning a piece i think uh, because uh, after like let's see here here uh there is this knight e5 move but obviously we're just gonna win a piece here on c5 so that's obviously not good but after bishop d7 covering the a4 square we can play b4 here which uh, gets into some favorable complications uh, because the back rank of uh, black's back rank is very weak after ab4 ab4 there's a bishop f2 move uh, just snatching a pawn because we cannot take it on account of rook a1 but we can just play king h1 here and after the trade here and the queen c7 attacking the knight on c3 we can give a check on a8 and the best move here is the knight c8 uh, because bishop c8 runs into just knight b5 where the uh knight will land on d6 and let's say um okay after queen c6 there's bishop b7 also uh 97 and then uh okay the queen already recommends some move like knight g5 or queen f4 but essentially we see this position is already very good all of these moves win i think and after knight c8 here which is best we can play bishop d2 which is quite counterintuitive um just going back but um, just the point of it is that we're just defending the knight and knight b5 is not really we don't really want to trade the pieces there let's say after h3 we can play knight e2 uh, knight e5 queen f4 fg uh, hg2 king g2 and f6 and after this trade uh we can actually just win a piece here 
um, this is technically winning. Um, black has three pawns for the piece, but um, yeah, this is uh, much better because our pieces are going to be very active and we have the bishop pair. Um, so yeah, I think that this line is uh, very good for very good for um, white. Yeah, it's actually, but uh, I doubt that um, black is going to ever find like the best uh, the best variation in this a5 line, um, which is already quite rare to begin with. Uh, this knight d7 move is quite interesting. It leads to different play because um, black wants to take on uh, take these pawns, and actually we can't defend both of them, so we should definitely play b4 here, which is quite principled, um, because after knight takes d5, we can play bishop b2, which um, um, already uh, kicks this, uh, already gets a tempo on this knight on e5. And here uh, against knight c6, uh, we can we can just continue with normal development knight f3. And at some point, we see this pawn structure happen time and time again, where we can break the position open with the move c4. So we will see after knight f6, we can immediately play c4 here. And after a5, we can play b5, knight b8, uh, bishop d4, uh, preparing the move knight c3. Um, I think this line was also given by Wessie, so I'm going to be transparent here um, and I'll claim it as any of my own. But uh, yeah, essentially, this line is very good for white um, because knight e4 is possible, but we play knight c3 here. And knight c5 cannot be played on account of this and bishop e2, where the um, we're going to castle next, and d5 is going to be permanent weakness. Um, and if knight c3, bishop c3, and knight d7, let's say, we can just play the move c6, where the complications favor white a lot. Let's say after takes takes and knight f6, we play bishop e2, very common development. And here after this trade, uh, we can play queen a4, where the pawn on c6 is going to be quite annoying uh, to deal with. Um, yeah, so this variation is also quite good. And um, yeah, that's against this knight e4 move. Against knight bd7, we can play against c6, very thematic. After bc6, bc6. Uh, the pawn on uh, c6 will stay alive and cause black some serious issues uh, after here we can trade and to play bishop b5 where there are already some threats to dis uh, to discover check um and for queen e7 uh the best move here is to play bishop e5 and actually just castle and play rook e1 next um so i yeah i don't think queen e7 is best here but this is already quite uh quite bad for black because uh once castle and rook e1 happens black is not in time to get out of the e-file so um yeah this variation is not very serious um and against here i mean you could play knight g6 here but i think uh already move like h4 here and just sacrificing the pawn is completely fine here because there's this move and bishop d7 takes takes and um yeah the computer already recommends, recommends a move like c4 which blasts open the position uh this already looks very very good for white so knight g6 just hit up with h4. Uh, like usual, we see when the knight lands on g6, we can play the move h4. And so that's completely fine. And this move knight c6 is, um, it does remove some of the options that uh, white has um, in relation to bishop c5, because we have this queen g4 move. Because after knight c6, we should definitely play knight f3 here. Um, because if we play move like b4, then after a5, uh, black manages to undermine our pawns. And if we push b5, then the e5 pawn drops and the c5 becomes weak and we're definitely going to lose a pawn uh, in the future. So we should play knight f3 here and after bishop c5, we should definitely play b4 here. Um, if f6 happens, then um, we can actually just hold on to the pawn. Let's say e f6 and then if queen f6, then we play knight c3, bishop c5 and then knight b5 with some serious uh, concrete problems here um, for, for black. Um, and if knight f6, then we can play b4, where black has no compensation for the pawn. Uh, and against bishop c5 here, which is definitely the most logical, we can play b4. And bishop b6. So bishop b6 is definitely the best move. If they play something like bishop e7, the problem with this move is that now knight e7 is no, lo no longer possible. And if black has to resort to a move like knight h6, then we can at the very least take on h6 and cause black some serious problems there. And like queen d2, for example, can already target the pawn and black is already in quite some trouble. Um, and after this, we can play b5. Um, and here, uh, there are only two two good moves. I mean, two possible moves. Knight b8 prepares knight d7 to c5, 
but here we can play bishop d3 and a6 here is best um if knight e7 happens preparing knight c5 then after castles knight c5 and a4 uh we're already solidifying the pawn after f6 for e1 um as long as the main point here is that as long as uh black is uh white is able to hold on to the control over the e5 square then white should be slightly better at the very least um, and notice that even with the bishop on e7 it makes black's development quite awkward because uh, 97 is no longer possible and here even bishop is uh, 96 we can just take immediately and so black faces some serious problems in this uh, with development in this position um, and so here a6 is possible um, trying to uh, get the uh, knight to a6 and possibly c5 here um, which and also undermining the pawn uh, and here we can just take on a6 knight a6 and the castles as per usual knight c5 and here we can play knight c3 um, and with this pawn on e5 being a massive thorn uh, on black's position knight f6 is not possible knight h6 we can just take for example knight h6 we just take and then knight e2 uh, oh yeah this line was recommended again by so and um at some point uh yeah the knight is going to be more useful on the king side let's say after this line queen b4 um but it's already much better and after bishop d7 here um we can play a4 which controls b5 further uh and there are obvious tactics here um, as to why this pawn cannot be taken because there's always going to be some bishop b5 checks just with a fork and let's say knight h6 here uh, it's similar to the uh, knight h6 on the previous move without bishop d7 and so we play here and then knight e2 and again um, after castles queen d2 bishop g5 queen b4 we can re reach it, we reach the same position uh, a very similar position here uh, with the queen more active and black facing some problems with h4 and this structural weakness so knight h6 is not really a serious plan to go for uh, h5 on the other hand uh, looks um, more reasonable to prepare knight h6 here as to not allow um, white to take on h6 and then uh, damage the pawn structure but here we can play knight d4 where we gain control over the b5 square and at some point we can even swing one of the knights like knight cb5 there um, and this position is still quite complicated, I have to be honest, but white should still be better after h4, h3, preventing obviously black from pushing h3. That h6, rookie 1, and the g6 here. And um, this tries to get the king to safety with like king f8 at the g to g7. And I think here we should just play the move bishop f4. Um, in Wesley's course, he recommended the move knight cb5, um, which is not the best here because there's actually this really counterintuitive move which is bishop b5 giving up the bishop um but at the point is after bishop b5 king f8 um bishop b3 and then knight f5 black's position is actually quite solid in this pawn structure um i don't see a reliable way to get a big advantage here um against c4 black can at least just take on c4 and um this with the pawn on um e6 defending f5 and f7 defending e6 i don't think there's any real advantage here to be had um, which is why I recommend the move bishop f4 and after uh, knight f5 here. Okay, g5 looks like it goes for the attack, but this is definitely, I mean, black has no right to go for the attack here. I mean, black is so underdeveloped and, or at least the king is in some danger in the center of the board and, um, okay, development is fine for black, but um, this is definitely not uh, what black should be playing. And we can play just play bishop e3 here. And if we successfully land a knight on uh, on d6 here, when knight cb5 and knight d6 here, white will be much better, even at the cost of like um, that pawn possibly being attacked um, with like the queen and stuff. Um, there's always going to be some pressure on the e file, for example, to give us some compensation. And let's say after king f8 here, we can play knight cb5, rook a4, rook a4, knight e4, knight d6, and it looks like just like black white is down a pawn after bishop d6, e d6. This pawn is weak, but we can actually see the following continuation is quite concrete here after e5 is no good because we can actually play this with bishop b5 where the tactics work in our favor because ed4 we can play queen d4 which gains it uh which just attacks everything in black's position and for knight c3 queen h5 um i think white is already winning here uh on account of bishop g5 taking on h6 um yeah this is already busted and the knight c5 here i think is best but after knight f3 um both the knight on c5 uh, on on c5 and the pawn on g5 are being attacked and so after knight e3 we can play an intermezzo and after f6 we take an h6 and then queen d3 bishop c8 and queen a3 just defending the pawn 
and um, this position is already plus four uh, despite the fact that we're equal material and black has a central pawn mass but the fact is that this pawn in d6 is very very strong and we're already threatening the move d7 right now so after king f7 rook e3 uh, prepares rook c3 and then infiltration um, after e5 we can play rook c3 king e6 and then queen b4 which is a very nice move it slowly creeps into the position uh, just slightly improving and this already gives white a decisive advantage the threat here right now is to play the move queen g4 um, and then just like take the bishop on c8 um, and yeah this is already no good like bishop d7 we can already play the move rook c7 where everything is going to fall to pieces there let's say bishop d7 rook c7 rook c6 i think rook e7 just wins so yeah um that's already very very good for white so this is just some of the thematic ideas i want to give it's not really forcing but uh, it's not really forced but it gives some thematic ideas on the position on how to play it and knight f5 here is um i think the best um try but after bishop f5 um gf5 we should definitely give up the bishop in this position because um we want to get we still have the same thematic idea of bringing one of the, knight, one of the knights to d6 and we can't do that if we give up the knight so we need to give for the bishop after queen f3 we're just preparing the move queen e3 to take control more of the dark squares here and um there's a move that i've that i've uh, found here excuse me um 94 i think against both 94 and bishop a4 we should play the same move here which is queen e3 against 94 uh okay i mean we can also play rook b1 here um just as i can b7 um and taking control over the open file after queen c7 94 d4 and the queen b3 we already have a big advantage here um, because there's a lot of pressure on b7 and knight b5 is always in the air for example rook a7 we can play knight b5 uh, which forks the rook and the queen and so after bishop b5 queen b5 and king f8 bishop e3 uh, already attacks the rook after here we can get this uh position where we're just up a pawn and rook c2 um uh, queen c2 i think is already a big mistake because of rook c1 i think yeah rook c1 and rook c8 is just coming so um yeah and and, and, if, and black just trades here then they're completely losing obviously just an outside passport for white and um yeah black has nothing here and so i've I found a queen e5 here um but we can actually just trade the queens into a favorable end game um because of this uh, outside pass pawn after queen b8 takes takes and then we can just play bishop d4 here which forces e5 uh we can take here and then play bishop b6 here and then a5 where we're obviously completely winning here um there is no way that black is going to survive this position with c4 c5 coming uh very bad for black after bishop c5 here we can again play the move knight b5 forcing the trade of um the bishop for the knight and after king f8 queen b7 we get the similar situation just up upon and so this is always just strategically dangerous for uh, black um, and so black should probably just take the pawn on e4 and try to hold on to it but here uh, after queen e3 we see that black has so many holds in the position that it doesn't really matter uh, that we're down a pawn um, we're still better in this position because uh, moves like rook eb1 come to mind um, one of the nice to b5 um, and or, or even just like possibly knight e2 to keep the position more solid um, so after bishop d7, uh, king h2, just securing the king, we can actually just play this position um, calmly and slowly. After knight e4, um, I think knight c2 is best, and we avoid the exchange, and uh, I really don't see uh, the future of this black king, because um, the king is unsafe on either side of the board. If a castle is short, then obviously it's going to get made it in like 10 moves, I, I can guarantee you that. Okay, maybe it's not force me, force me to ten moves, but it's gonna come eventually. Um, and essentially, the king is unsafe, and I really don't see the uh, what uh, white's next move, uh, black's next move is gonna be. We can continue putting on pressure like queen b three, rook b one, and again, we have a lot of pressure on the position. Uh, additionally, the knight on e four looks nice, but we can kick it with the move f three uh, anytime we want. So that's nothing to be afraid of. So I think this it covers this line. Um, bishop d7, yeah, with bishop d7, um, and against f6 here, uh, which is a typical idea, um, 
If we can play this move, bishop b5, which causes some disruption in black's uh, development after bishop d7, and then we can play a move like queen e2, I think. Um, and yeah, in general, this position, I didn't go much into de much depth into this position, but uh, I really don't see a good move for black because knight f6 is not possible, knight h6 is no good, uh, bishop b5 is no good because knight b5 is coming. Um, and yeah, really, uh, like fe5, knight e5 is also again like just horrible with all the weaknesses. So this is already quite a big advantage. Um, so this covers this a6 move and this knight b8 move in general. Against knight a5, we can again continue with bishop d3, bishop d7 castles. And uh, bishop c5 was played in one game, I think. Um, and knight c4 is recommended by the computer, uh, or, or no, it was not. It was played by Sveshnikov. Uh, I mean, his opponent played this against him. And I think the simple way is just to take on c4, play knight c3, let's say queen a5, bishop d2. And even at the cost of a pawn, we can play knight d4 with a big initiative from already. Bishop d7, we can also already play knight cb5 here with the possibility of knight b6 or like let's see here. Yeah, already rook b1 is quite good. Um, so knight c4 is actually just a, um, it's not hard to see what's the best move there. Uh, and against bishop c5, which clears the e7 square for the knight, uh, we can play the move knight c3 here um, with some either uh, with either some knight a4 ideas or uh, such as for example for knight e7. We can play knight a4, which already um, wins the bishop pair. Um, or we can play knight e2 at f4 and um, with a pleasant advantage in this position. Um, so yeah, that covers this variation um, in depth. Essentially, we see that bishop e7 is not really much to be afraid of because we can continue with normal moves like bishop d3, uh, castles. We can consider either knight c3 or knight d2. Um, and uh, in general, um, the bishop on e7 just blocks black's development. And so bishop b6 is definitely the best move here. After which we can play uh, bishop b2. And, um, okay, uh, b5 is quite reason. I mean, quite possible here, but I didn't, I didn't really go into the theory in this because um, this is quite unexplored. And uh, I think bishop b2 is also quite reliable. Um, b5, I think it was played by Grishik uh, once against Navara. And he won that game, um, but um, we're just going to focus on the main move here, which is the move, bishop b2. And here, um, black has a variety of setups they can choose. Uh, knight h6 prepares knight f5 here, um, but it doesn't really have a nice future because like, after bishop d3, black can't really play knight f5. And in general, we can always just take and then the d5 square, the d5 pawn is going to be weak. So knight h6 is just not a good move there. Um, f6 is more challenging here. And it leads to double edge play, but I think um, if White plays this, plays the move order precisely, White can get a uh, quite a big bind on the position. Uh, the move here that we should play is the move Knight Bd2. Uh, the main move by far is Bishop d3, which is actually not uh, too good. I think that Black can get equality in this line, mainly due to the fact that the uh, there's pressure on the f file, and the Bishop on b6 actually exerts exerts quite nice pressure on f2. Let's say after f5. Um, um, castles is the main move, I think, um, but knight e5 is uh, at least a queen g5, and already I don't want to, I don't really want to calculate this variation because there's always going to be some queen g2 in between moves. Um, so um, castle here is best, um, and okay, obviously e4 just loses the g7 pawn with no compensation here, but uh, move like queen c7, we can play knight e5 and go for this queen h5 trick where we're going to be winning. Um, or at least after queen f7, we're gonna be able to win the pawn back uh, under favorable, uh, win the bees back under favorable circumstances with the bishop pair and the e6 pawn being so weak. Um, so queen c7 is no so good, but we can, but black can play knight f6 here, which is the main problem. And after knight e5, castles, knight d2, uh, a5 here, um, I think that black is fast enough to get a uh, good counterplay. Uh, if we play move like c4 here, uh, it leads to many force draws. I think this was like the top engine move, but after one of the sample lines here, um, yeah, this is just one of the sample lines. And essentially I, I never see an advantage here for, uh, I just never see an advantage for white in any of these lines. You can check the PGN out yourself and against uh, AB4 and 85, I think both lead to draws. And against queen 2 again, um, 
This leads to the main problem here is that Black has managed to successfully play a five and is able to trade off the rooks. And in this end game, it's not really too dangerous because the Black King is already castled. And um, yeah, in general, I don't really like allowing this. Uh, if the Black King was a, a Canner Castle and uh, and Black managed to play it, if I move, then maybe there uh, there can be a case to be made there for Black. But in this position, after AB4, Knight C6, BC6, and the trade of rooks here, I really just don't see any any advantage here. Um, yeah, in this position, the computer already says says very equal, and rather I would I would prefer to play Black in this position to be honest, because um, Black is very active and has the um, pair of bishops, uh, or at least this bishop on c7 is very nice on this diagonal. So, which is why I don't, uh, which is why I do not recommend the mate move, which is bishop d3. Um, knight bd2 was a uh, was something that first came to my attention, obviously by uh, Wesi So. He recommended this move, and I was like, this is just ingenious. Uh, the The reason that this is like s such a so much better than bishop d3 is that there's an action, there's an additional option here. Uh, if um, um, which revolves around um, the fact that white maintains control over the F, uh, the e5 square under um, favorable circumstances, which happens after f5, e5, knight e5, knight f6, bishop d3, and if black castles, then knight df3 is the main is the critical variation that gives white the advantage. Um, against a move like a5 here, uh, which immediately tries to challenge. Um, white uh, we can just castle here and if a b4 happens knight c6 bc6 a b4 rook a1 queen a1 um the difference in this position is that um okay first off the black king hasn't castled and if you castle then there's bishop d4 already um which okay let's say after castles bishop d4 um if we manage to trade off these bishops then black then white will have a massive bind on the e5 square let's say let's say after queen d6 and knight f3 this e5 square is under white's control, and uh, as I've said in the beginning, uh, if white manages to take control of this e5 square um, in this variation, then white should be better. And we're just going to pile up the pressure slowly, slowly with rookie 1 and uh, knight e5, possibly. Um, so bishop c7 is best here, uh, avoiding these change of bishops. But here we can play queen c3, and black has some serious problems with the uh, structure, uh, c6 and e6. If queen d6, then we can play knight f3, preparing bishop e5, I think. Um, yeah, hoping I'm hoping that's right, actually. Let's say queen d6. Okay, maybe knight f3, there's knight e4, which probably just wins for <laughs> probably just wins for uh, for black. But yeah, a move like g3 is already very, very good, where uh, there's going to be a threat of bishop c5 right now. Um, so yeah, that covers this line. And yeah, essentially, in this line, uh, it's an improvement because... Uh, after AB4, uh, in this line after uh, AB4, then we can um, gain control of the E5 square uh, very nicely. And after castles, we can play B5 here, Knight E5, Bishop E5, where White has uh, two active bishops on this di on these diagonals, and a strong bind over the E5 square. Uh, already a move like Knight E7 is a mistake because we could play Queen H5, and after G6, Bishop G6, uh, Black is getting crushed. Queen E7 is already best, and then we just retreat up a pawn. And if they move, play a move like queen e7 here, we can play the move c4, which is very uh, thematic in this structure with uh, this d5 and e6 pawn. Uh, also, typically, we see this pawn on f6. We can also play the c4 move, um, which discourages black from playing e5 because the uh, cd5 would be very strong in general. Uh, bishop d7 here is best, and after a4, y's position is clearly preferable. I think um, we have a uh, very nice um, pawn mass on this side of the board and uh, let's say a sample line is rook ac8 rook c1 bishop e8 king h1 preparing f4 uh, to grip the e5 square after knight d7 we can play bishop g3 and let's say after knight c5 we can play cd5 um, which makes use of the pin along the c file um, after ed5 knight b3 uh, white is able to get rid of black's best piece and uh, which is another c5 after bishop f7 here um, already the bishop on d3 is very well placed and black has an isolated pawn on d5. That's after h3, queen d7, rook e1, uh, bishop e4, takes, takes, rook e3, b6, queen f3, rook f8, rook e5. Black has already a lot of weaknesses, uh, namely the h7 pawn, uh, which can be subject to some bishop h7 tricks. Um, 
for um, yeah, also the D5 pawn, I think. So um, this is already better for white. And just going back, um, seven knight c5. There's also this move bishop f7. Uh, we're just trying to defend the pawn, but we can just play rook e1 like normal. Knight c5, bishop b1, uh, queen d7. We can play bishop e5, uh, bishop g6 takes takes, and then bishop d4. Um, yeah, with a slight edge, obviously. I think the computer says this is like fine, but obviously, uh, from a human perspective, this g6 and e6 weaknesses are already pretty significant. Um, so, yeah, that's definitely not something that black is quite happy to go into. Uh, I think bishop d7, yeah, okay. Bishop d7 here, it's similar, we can just play a4. Because if you give black another move, they may want to play a4 themselves. Um, so, um, and, and just like make our pawns not able to support each other. Which is why play, we play a4 now. After rook c8, c4, already black has a slightly worse position because of the structure. Uh, and black has three pawn islands in this position uh, compared to white's two. Uh, we're already undermining the center. Um, and black uh, has a. I mean, the computer says this is like pretty okay and pretty playable, but uh, because mainly because of the fact that the bishop is on b6 and it's quite nice on this diagonal to exert some pressure. Um, but black does, definitely does not have equality in this position because there are some apparent issues related to the structure. Um, I think, yeah, after c4, actually we can, yeah, we just continue rook e8, rook c1, it's, yeah, it's, it's a quite a bit better for white. And so this covers this, um, this line, I think, uh, with a5, right? And so here the best move is just to castle, um, and the main idea that, uh, so, uh, um, like, suggest here is just to play the move at df3, and this is similar to the main position where I recommend it, uh, where I showed bishop d3, which is the main move. Uh, but the difference is that instead of castling, which we have in this uh, in that position, we have the move knight df3. And here we might get a massive grip on the e4, uh, on the e5 square, which gives um, white quite a big uh, edge. Uh, let's say after knight e5 here, uh, we have to take the, with the knight here, knight takes e5. Because if we play knight, bishop takes e5, then there's this knight g4 move with pressure after bishop g3 and e5. I think black is already better here because there's a threat of e4 in this position. Which is why we need to take with knight e5. And here, uh, bishop f2 does not, it's just a sacrifice that doesn't work because after king f2, uh, queen b6, we can just play king e2, uh, knight e4, and then queen e1, a very nice defensive move. After rook f2, king d1, rook, a, rook g2, bishop e4, takes takes here, uh, queen f2 and the bishop c3. Uh, Black is just completely busted here. They have no composition for the uh, for the piece here. White is able to defend successfully. The next move, we can just play king c1, king b2, and uh, be completely safe in this position. Up a piece also. And against uh, knight e4 here, we can just play king e1. And after queen h4, we play g3, knight g3, and then hg3, uh, queen h1, queen king d2, where the king will actually escape to c3. And... Um, White has two pieces for the uh, rook, uh, rook and two pawns actually. But the fact that we get a massive grip on the e5 square and the fact that the bishop on c8 is so underdeveloped gives white a big advantage here. The computer already says plus five, which is quite insane. And so bishop f2 doesn't work. And knight e4 looks like it just wins like on f2 because if we castle, then uh, knight f2 is just completely crushing. But the point is, point here is that after bishop e4, Surprisingly, white survives, the, white survives the complications because bishop f2 is actually no good. Uh, white, black will probably realize soon after king e2 that the bishop on f2 is quite loose. It's being put, uh, there's some pressure on it. And so after bishop, f, bishop h4, we can just play bishop f3. But the main point is that after d e4, queen d8, rook d8, king f2, uh, we just up a piece here. And so this bishop f2 move uh, looks good, but uh, the bishop is under serious pressure after king e2. Which is why um, black should probably just play uh, d e4. And after we trade the queens and play c4, black's doubled pawns uh, are a big problem uh, along with the inactive pieces uh, and white's domination on the e5 square. So let's say after bishop c7, rook d1, rook, rook f5, knight g4, b6, castles, bishop b7, rook d7, rook f7, and rook d1, um, which is already clearly better for uh, for white, despite the fact that despite the fact that black has the bishop pair. 
because of these weak pawns. So uh, this 94 move is not too scary. Um, and it's the reason that this that this move knight bd2 is the possibly the reputation of this entire um, early f6 line, I think. And so we're going into the main meat and potatoes of this uh, line, which is knight g7. I think most of your opponents will go for this. And here, um, for full transparency, I will mention that uh, knight bd2 is the move that uh, I, I was trying to uh, analyze before I found that Wesley still recommended this advanced variation uh, in the Karakhan. Um, I tried to find this, uh, I was I was just playing around a bit and I found that the main move was bishop d3, but I didn't really like the fact that after knight g6 castle, castles, there's always this knight f4 idea, which I think is able to liquidate into uh, a very dry end game here after c4. Let's just say after castle, c5. Okay, uh, I think here best is like, uh, with castles and a c5, bishop c7, bishop c2, a6, rook e1, f6, cf6, rook f6 here. Um, and if we take on f6, that's already no good because the um, queen will enter the game, knight b2, uh, because the rook is hanging. And then already uh, with all of the pieces aimed at the king side here, I don't really like this position. And for knight c3, which is best, there's queen f8, knight a4. Uh, and this position is already quite unclear, I think. Um, black can get. Uh, like and complicate the position after e5 which i don't really like um which is why i uh tried to find an alternative here um which revolves around not allowing this move knight g6 to f4 uh and the main problem with the uh with it, from the white perspective is that knight g6 to f4 will come with a tempo on the bishop on d3 which is why i tried to research this bishop knight bd2 move and only after uh, doing some uh, analysis with the engine myself, I found out that Wesley Soul also recommended this. And um, so I'm going to mention some of his lines, uh, but I'm also going to mention some of the lines that I've researched myself. So this is like in addition to his analysis, I think. Uh, the point here is that knight g6 is no good. Be because the fact that the bishop is not in d3, um, that f4 is not really dangerous. We can just kick it with g3. And here, black should avoid this because of the move h4. And... Um, Again, knight f4 is not, not dangerous because of because of g3. And if they play a move like h5, then the pawn will be a, con a consistent weakness uh, from this position on. Um, a move like castles would already run into knight g5, which loses the h5 pawn. And so here we should just play, um, okay, uh, let's say after h5, then there's g3, preventing knight f4, and then we prepare bishop d3 next, queen e2. And after bishop c7 and bishop uh, queen e2, we need to defend the e5 pawn. Um, f6 is here is probably best um and i think white still has a big advantage a6 is quite slow i found um it prevents any b5 ideas but um I just this i just want to show this variation to show what happens if um, black makes a nonsense move and we can just play the move bishop h3 here um the bishop is just best on this diagonal not in g2 where it's blocked by the white zone knight uh but after b5 here let's say knight b3 bishop b6 castles queen c7 um here uh, note that f6 is being threatened right now because if we take an f6 then there's queen g3 making use of this pin so we should play king h2 here and in general um this position is already just very very good because uh we can play rook f1 rook ad1 and black has serious weaknesses uh related to this h5 pawn black on castle and casting on the other side of the board is quite dangerous because if they cancel queen side then we can possibly break with a5 uh, a4 so uh, that just kind of shows the position, uh, the dangers of the position. And f6 here is a uh, reasonable way to try to complicate things. But after ef6, gf6, bishop g2, e5, we can play the c4 move, uh, which undermines um, black center. And it, it, uh, best here is just to play d4 and admit that, um, okay, black has uh, structural problems here. I mean, um, problems with the weak light squares in the position. Um, and we see here that after castles, bishop g4, queen d3, f5 here i think f5 is not best but just to show that if black thinks that the position is great because black is getting attacked here with all of these pawns uh we can actually just play b5 here and after knight c7 play knight g5 where this knight is very nicely placed uh thanks to the fact of the pawn not being on f6 anymore uh and after e4 queen b3 uh white is already threatening to play the move c5 in this position because the knight on g5 uh, along with the queen uh, provides a good combination here 
and actually these pawns uh, cannot be pushed forward which um, essentially gives white a big advantage here and so this i just know that this uh, that these complications favor white um and after h5 here okay we saw that line but let's talk about bishop c7 um yeah it attacks the e5 pawn so we obviously need to defend it with queen e2 and already we have a clear advantage because we're going to play g3 and the h5 next move with a big advantage but after f6 which is quite critical we can play ef6 gf6 castles e5 and then h5 here taking the knight knight f4 queen e1 castle and then knight c4 i think um white already has a big advantage here because the knight is coming to e3 to pressure some of the points and let's say after bishop g4 knight e3 black is under serious pressure here bishop f3 gf3 already opens up the uh h uh, the g file and prepares knight f5 uh, also knight d5 is a threat right now i think uh in conjunction with uh, bishop c4 so this line is already no, no good which is the main appeal of this uh, of of playing this a uh, knight bd2 move um instead of the move bishop d3 and I think the first game that I've ever played with this variation where I play knight bd2 against my opponent, my opponent immediately played knight g6, which shows that um, most people are just probably just like in, in blitz, at least they're blitzing out the moves knight g6, whatever, we're gonna just play bishop d3 in castles. But no, we have this h4 move, which destroys black's position completely. And after castles here, which is best, we can play bishop d3. And I guess knight g6, okay. Uh, a5 here is, uh, looks reasonable, but um, and this looks like a perfect opportunity to give the Greek, Greek gift sacrifice. But here, what's best is actually to play the move b5 first. Um, we're definitely going to go for the Greek gift. But the problem here is that with the knight on c6, uh, there is some pressure on the e5 pawn. And in this line that I found, which is quite interesting, which shows the difference between, uh, uh, I mean, whether the knight is on c6 or is on b8, is that in this variation after um, ef6, then there's move e5. And the point is that after, uh, if you play a move like knight e6, then after king f6, uh, this pawn on e5 is defended by the by the knight. However, if we play the move b uh, b5 first, then after knight b8, bishop e7, king e7, and we follow the same line here, we can play e f6, and after e5, there's a knight e6 move, where uh, king f6 uh, runs into bishop e5. After uh, king takes e5, queen e2, king d6, and knight e8, we're just completely winning here uh, winning a uh, full queen uh, I think for three pieces yeah for three pieces however the fact that the the king is on uh, d6 here already uh, is no it's not good for black and we can blast up on the position here with c4 where white has a material advantage and already decisive attack so uh, essentially this uh, a5 move um, black always needs to be uh, careful about this previous sacrifice uh, and against knight g6, uh, knight f4 is now not a possibility. Um, okay, uh, knight f4 is now not a possibility um, uh, like a previous uh, in the previous move. Uh, but here, um, I think what's best is just to force manners with b5 here. Um, if we play move like g3, uh, I think black gets in some counterplay with, with f6 immediately. And I think this position is quite um, dangerous for uh, both sides to deal with which is why i'd recommend the move b5 here and uh there are three moves here knight b8 it looks like a cunning maneuver um to prepare knight d7 to c5 saying that um white broke this weakness on c5 however as per usual we can make the uh, make use of the fact that the knight is on g6 and play the move h4 and obviously against h5 we can play knight g5 and against uh f5 here um which is played uh by um Pelletier against Volokitin um, and for h5 here which is correct knight f4 bishop f1 g6 hg6 um, so I think uh, in the game uh, ef6 was played which I think is not not good at all I think it loses all of the advantage but here h5 knight f4 bishop f1 uh, and already we're threatening g3 to trap the knight after g6 takes um, hg6 is no good because knight b3 and we're actually just clearing the d2 square for the queen here um, black is in serious trouble. Let's say knight h5, queen d2, f4, bishop d3, queen e8, knight h4, and black is already losing the pawn on g6. I think after g5, there's knight g6, and the computer already says plus 10, which is pretty crazy. Um, and uh, against knight g6 here, which is best, we should just play against knight b3, 
Um, and at some point we're preparing queen e2 uh, with ideas of knight g5 uh, to attack h7 or even like queen h6. I think in general knight g5 is better. Um, it's a better idea, but that's just something that already gives white a big advantage. Uh, which is why f5 can't be played there after h4. And h6 is best here, but after h5, again, um, like in knight f4, we just play bishop f1, where g3 threatens to trap the knight. And so d4 here is best uh, to give the d5 square for the knight. But after knight c4, um, we're threatening to take the bishop here and take on d4. And so after bishop c5, queen d2, knight d5, rook h3, um, what is actually in no rush to take the d4 pawn? We can take it whenever we want. But uh, in addition to that, we can also play the move rook g3 to prepare an attack. And I think uh, white is already uh, close to winning here. And so knight f4 is no good. Knight e7 is best, but again, after knight b3, black will faces serious problems developing normally um, due, to, due to the fact that the a5 pawn is, in, uh, is, is included and the e5 pawn is already a big thorn in black's position. Um, a6 is possible here, but I think we can just go for g4 where we don't actually care about this pawn. You can take it, then we're just going to push g5. Um, so yeah um so that's no good and knight d7 here is best i think uh the reason that knight d7 is better is because it prepares also this move f6 if we ever play g4 uh for example after g4 black can already play f6 and i think if we take on f6 then the knight will come and um black will have some counterplay against the g4 pawn uh, meanwhile uh, we should just play a4 here just play it calmly and we should switch gears here to play positionally uh, we prepared the a4 a5 move and now um after f6 let's say i think just uh, simply castling here and we get a similar uh with the same, same thematic ideas where if f5 happens then we take on e5 and we're completely happy there because we get massive control over the um, e5 square additionally uh, black has some serious problems on the light squares which is a favorable um which is favorable compared to the variations that we just looked at and so, yeah, I think that covers like 97, right? A4, yeah. Um, and so in general, uh, this move, like, okay, 98 is just no good uh, because of this H4 move. Uh, 97 is a better try, but again, it's not too challenging. Uh, we can first up play G3 here. Um, I think H4, yeah, knight F4, bishop F1, uh, F6 is, uh, gives black some counterplay there. Um, but if we play g3 here, we prevent any knight f4 ideas. And after uh, f6, it's a good move, uh, just challenging uh, white center. We have to castle here because uh, we're anticipating the uh, fe5 where we need to defend the f2 pawn. And after a6, we play a4 uh, as per usual. Uh, ab5, ab5, rook a1, bishop a1, um, bishop a1 here. And white again maintains a firm grip on e5, and this should give white a. A significant advantage as usual the bishop on c it is a problem piece and um yeah here i think we should be quite happy uh, i just want to show a sample line here which revolve around the move f5 i want to point out the closing that point that closing the position excuse me um is no good because especially with the knight on e7 here uh, it makes black's position a bit awkward and there are some nice resources to be had here um because f4 is the f4 push is not really um really that appealing let's say after queen e2 which is a standard move we can after f4 here we can actually play the move g4 and we can play this move because black does not, does not have this move knight h4 uh mainly due to the fact that this knight on e7 is blocking the queen's path uh, of supporting the knight to h4 and so next move we can just play a bishop b2 to a uh, to a3 and then possibly some c4 ideas um also uh an additional idea is knight b3 to d4 to centralize the knight and I think white already has a big advantage in this position. Uh, this knight e7 move is not too challenging. I think uh, knight, F, knight e5 is definitely best. And after g3, um, again, I would just want to show some sample lines to show how big, how nice white's position is. If they play a move like f6, um, the knight on e5 is not exactly helping in the support over the e5 square. So this move can't be good. After we just castle, bishop e7, queen e2. Uh, keeping control over e5 let's say rook c8 play a4 queen e7 and the c4 where um this d7 bishop is just bad uh, we're already undermining uh black's structure um and, and the weakness um 
after let's say 95 bishop e5 fe5 95 uh we give up the bishop here because we want to maintain control of the e5 square uh with the knight and let's say after bishop e8 cd5 ed5 and okay e1 we already have a clear and stable advantage in this position the, we can say that the d5 pawn is an, is an isolated pawn um so f6 is not really that good uh bishop c5 here uh looks interesting uh prepares b6 and bishop b7 i think it is the most common move right in this position uh, at least in the elite just database um but here we can play queen e2 and after b6 we play h4 and we kick, quickly get the initiative here um so let's say queen c7 we play h5 97 and then h6 i think in the other moves uh, in the other games rook h2 is played uh, but it doesn't really help White's position, in my opinion. I think that h6 uh, gains a space and it closes the king side. Uh, and this is kind of counterintuitive, I have to admit, uh, but it's the best. Um, after g6, we play the move knight b3 here. This knight b3 move is really strong because uh, this bishop, first off, cannot retreat. And if knight b3 happens, then actually this is already losing. Because after cb3, there's already the threat of b4 here. And the knight actually does not have a good square. After uh, knight f5, we can play b4. After the bishop retreats, g4 just traps the knight. Uh, and so we see that this is like suddenly awkward. Like, where's this knight going? Where's this bishop going? Um, and so bishop b7 is possible here, but we just take on a5 and play a4. Um, and let's say bishop b4, king f1, d4, rook h4, uh, knight f5, bishop f5 here, and then rook c1. It's a very precise move uh, to uh, win the d4 pawn next uh, with rook d4. And okay, black has the bishop here staring down this long diagonal, but uh, with the c6 uh, square under firm control here, and if we don't give the uh, option for black to play queen c6, then we should be completely winning here. Um, um, so yeah, that's... Uh, also, additionally, I mean, if we don't want to play rook h4, then we can play the bishop e4 just to neutralize it. I think white still has a big advantage in that position, uh, mainly due to the fact that the d4 pawn is weak. Um... Also, knight c4 here is uh, considered is considered best by the computer. After bishop c4, d4, uh, we cannot take on c4 on account of bishop f2, uh, so we take on c5 here. After queen c5, a4, bishop b7, bishop a3, uh, queen d5, we just take on e7, and then uh, rook e8 is best. After bishop f6, we get into this end game um, where the where it looks like black has the initiative here because of the c3 pawn uh, and like this bishop on f3 being so strong. But notice that we're actually doing the same thing here and rather this bishop on f3 is more useful because it covers the d8 square and after this move g4 we are ready to activate the rook with rook g3 and actually uh black cannot defend this pawn we have king d1 and then rook a3 where we're actually just going to win the pawn on c3 so that's actually just like the that's considered best so uh, the best situation there is that we're going to be winning a pawn um so that's actually um very nice to know i think so bishop c5, we can play that. Against a6 here, it's also recommended by the computer. Um, I think in all of the lines, essentially, we, we always respond to a6 with a4. Uh, if the knight is on, however, the knight, if the knight is on b8, I think we should take on a6. So that's, I think, how I would try to remember it. If the knight is on b8 and black plays a6, then we take. If the knight is not on b8 and um, black plays a6, then we should play a4. Um, and here we're just gonna go for the same uh, with the same plan here. I think uh, with h4 castles queen e2 uh, to prevent any knight c4 ideas. For example, if black plays queen c7 here, I think uh, queen e2 is also I think it's also is best here because knight c4 we can just win a pawn. Uh, and so a6 there uh, is no good against queen c7. It's considered um, it's considered best. I mean, a6 was recommended by the computer. I think it's the second best move. But queen c7 is recommended. Um, and here we can again play queen e2, which is the typical idea um, to prevent knight c4. Um, very important. And after knight c4, we just take there. And I don't see any compensation here after a6. We, uh, I think the best move here is just to castle long. And after, um, okay, there's bishop f2 here. I think we just take, take the b6 here to close down the uh, queen side, yeah. And if uh, a here, a b4, five here then knight b6 here and rook d6 here it seems to be much better uh queen c5 let's say rook hd1 yeah then b4 here we can see on b4 and there does not seem to be any danger on this 
uh, on this yeah on this like a file or b file i think um so yeah that actually covers this line i think with 985 so yeah uh, for this position i think we've already covered uh, the main idea with 9g7 to g6 here um and so we're gonna go back here and cover this the main move which is bishop takes c5 i think this is the most commonly played move and i've actually found um no serious advantage uh, with both knight f3 and the move b4 the reason that i think that this is such a like this is such a good variation is that um the main move before here is actually not that effective because the fact that the uh, that black has not committed with knight c6 means that black can play this move a5 really quickly which undermines uh white's queenside uh pawn here which you can you can say that it's overextended um i mean black at least can make that um can make that um claim and uh without the knight on c6 here we and after and after e5 we cannot play b5 with tempo which is very important for example after bishop b6 bishop b2 um knight e, knight e7 here i think it's a very logical development after knight f3 and e5 here i think black has basically equalized here uh in the end games that result after this uh okay i mean if we play b5 then there's always a4 here i think uh a4 here where the pawn will be isolated and this is not what we want uh and so if we play a move like knight b2 and like this i really can't find any advantage here i've tried my best trust me but i really could not find anything here and a few games have gone into this i think uh, a few correspondence games have continued this and the computer says slightly better but i think it will calm down eventually uh, this gives white absolutely nothing uh which is why i think that's definitely the most practical try here uh is to go for not for b4 or knight f3 because i think knight f3 uh against this line again i think that um okay first off e5 uh this entire idea with h4 doesn't work with another g6 but here so early um and yeah I i'm not really fond of this variation i think um so yeah, we're gonna focus on the main move, which is queen g4, which was brought, uh, which was recommended by Wasi. So, and here there are a couple of moves. I mean, king f8. It was chosen by Mama Jarov once uh, against Robson, but Robson won that game. And uh, I think that the king is quite bad, badly placed on f8. We can continue with normal development like knight f3, knight c6, b4, bishop b6, uh, bishop b6, b5, uh, knight c7, bishop d3, queen c7, and castles. Where black's development is very very awkward. E5 is well defended, we're gonna play bishop b2 next, possibly a4, um, and yeah, I think white is, white is already significantly better in this position. Against g6, this is obviously just very, very weakening, and we can again play knight f3 here, and against knight c6, knight c3. f6 is uh, is an interesting way to uh, get the uh, get uh, some counterplay, because uh, knight e7 i think just runs into like bishop g5 some territory like that or even knight a4 which seems to be just winning for white apparently um should be six and bishop g5 so yeah this thematic idea of bishop g5 to f6 uh and with this knight uh, not an e7 obviously uh, this bishop g5 just takes 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 control over all of the dark squares so in general that's not so good uh and against f6 here we should play the move bishop b5 I think ef6 was recommended by so uh, but after knight f6 queen h4 the um, black gets some play there which i don't want to allow bishop b5 i think is best just to pin the knight uh, and not allow black to win a tempo with knight f6 obviously after fe5 knight e5 knight gd7 or knight e7 only move bishop h6 um this bishop is already dominant but very dominant on this position after let's say bishop d6 trying to kick the uh knight away from this square we can play queen e2 here after a6 um black uh, we're fine with giving up with giving up the bishop now because black has wasted a tempo on a6 and after bishop c6 uh, b6 here is best the fact that knight c6 here is no good it's uh, the main point is that um white can avoid giving black the strong central pawns here if we take on c6 then black possibly survives getting what they want which is a strong pawn center however we can play this move knight f3 and keep the pieces on the board where e6 is actually a major weakness after bishop f8 trying to trade white strong bishop we can take on f8 here and the castle long uh, let's say king g7 queen e3 and in this position um, black has so many weaknesses 
I think uh, the plan that I would go for is to go for h4, h5. We can also consider knight a4 to c5 or b6. Uh, the e6 pawn is very weak and white has a very big advantage here. And so knight c6 is no good. After bc6 here, uh, we should just castle. And uh, knight f5 is best to kick the knight away. Uh, but a move like queen c7 here, uh, logical, just to attack the knight. But we can just play rook h1 here to support the knight. And the trade on the e-file is uh, very good for um, very good for white because uh, in the end game the e6 pawn will be a big weakness. And for knight f5 here, just kicking away the bishop on h6, bishop g5 castles. We can just play g4 here. And if black retreats with the knight to e7, then we can play the move f4 and h4, h5. We're gonna be completely winning there. And so here, black has to play in bishop b5 to trade off the bishop. After we trade here on e5 and knight d6. We play bishop e7 and okay this does not win a piece first off because of knight f7 but after a rook e3 rook e8 and bishop c5 uh, and let's say e5 um black gets a big center here but uh this center uh is like very weak because d4 cannot be pushed right now and we can see that the b6 square um is very weak um which we can use like knight a4 uh, ideas here um to to make advantage to take advantage of these weaknesses First off, the g4 pawn is being attacked, so we need to play h3 here. Uh, and after bishop e6, we can play with g3. I think g3 is best. Uh, I don't think knight e4 is best here. I'm not sure why, but apparently d4 here gets some counterplay. Rook g3 here um, just yeah just gets out of the any d4 moves uh, because of d4. Then knight e4 is now a, a possibility. I think to f6, and yeah, that's already no good. Uh, and against a5 here, we just play b3, preventing any a4 pushes. Oops, sorry about that. a4 pushes. And after e4, knight a4, knight e5, and rook c3. White is a lot better here, um, because even if black has the central pawn mass, um, the fact that the bishop on, uh, on c5 controls the f8 square prevents any rook f8 ideas. Uh, and black is not lost in this position by any means, but definitely unpleasant here, because of the bishop on c5 and the knight possibly infiltrating either with knight b6 or like bishop b6 knight c5 ideas um and so yeah i think that this variation is quite good for quite good for white and here so knight f5 early is the best move and here uh definitely bishop f4 is best just to support the uh, support the knight and after castles uh h4 here is uh, the most straightforward way uh, another way to play is g4 but uh, this enters some complications where um if black walks this, walks this narrow path, black will actually be, uh, will actually have a really nice position here. Um, here, queen c7 is best, uh, and then um, it, which is a clever move because if gf5, then rook f5 will actually um, attack both the bishop and the knight here, and black is completely fine in this position. However, after rook hg1, uh, we're now seriously threatening gf5 because there will be some knight g6 and hg6, and then the rook can come in. Um, but here knight d4 is a really really nice move after rook d4 c5 rook a4 rook f4 takes takes and then bishop e5 uh let's just follow the line a bit more rook f3 rook b8 rook e1 and bishop g7 black is more than enough active counterplay here for the exchange um i i mean i would love to play this position as black uh due to the fact that this bishop is eyeing down this diagonal the rook's on b8 white has like no pieces defending the king uh the king uh, on the side of the board so i would not recommend this position at all which is why I think that this move h4 is more straightforward, uh, trying to prepare for h5. And c5 here is critical, and we can play again uh, h5 here. After g5, closing up the position, bishop h2, knight d4, queen d2. Uh, right now, we're threatening to play h6 to uh, prevent black themselves from playing h6. And so h6 is best here. And here we can just make use of the weak g6 square, bishop h2, rook h2, rook f7, then f4 here. And the complications actually favor white in this position. Uh, a move like e5 just doesn't work here because we can take on e5, rook f4 on the knight d3, where c5 is going to fall. Uh, and gf4 here, we play this move knight e2, uh, which targets the f4 pawn, really nice. Uh, the problem here is that knight f4 uh, allows queen g5, where black can actually force the exchange of queens, which is definitely not what we want when we're attacking. So we play knight e2 here, uh, which is best, attacking f4, and against knight e2, queen e2, and then uh, rook f5 here which is best um, because we are, I think we should be threatening something, right? Let's see. 
Okay, rook h4 to, to, to take f4 is also the strategy right now. Um, so rook f5 here and rook h4, the same idea. Um, and already move like queen c7 defending the pawn is a mistake because of rook f1. And e5 here, we can actually just take on f4 with the rook. And the uh, tactics behind the weak back rank just uh, basically um, mean that black, um, black is completely busted here. Rook f4, rook f4, where rook f8 is going to come. And the e5 pawn is also loose. So at the very least, white is going to win a pawn here. Um, but computer says plus 6, so... Um, yeah, queen c7 is no good. Rook a7 here is best just to cover the uh, seventh rank. Um, but after rook f4 takes stakes here and the queen g5, g3, uh, rook f7, uh, okay, e5 is no good because the d5 pawn hangs. Um, but after rook f7, uh, king b1 stepping out of the pin, or uh, queen g3, knight g6, and we have the devastating threat right now of rook takes d5 here, where e d5, queen e8, we just completely win here with queen e8 coming. Um, and so here, rook takes uh, e5 is best to give up the um, the d5 pawn and prepare bishop e6. Uh, we should definitely take that, bishop e6 and rook d2. And here, uh, queen h2 is like the best move in this position, which is pretty uh, pretty crazy of a move. Uh, because we have a weak back rank, so we cannot take because of rook f1 leading to mate. But we can play b3 here and after it takes takes, rook f1, king b2, king f7, knight e5, king f6 and king c3. Objectively, this is an equal endgame uh, because White's pawn will fall on uh, on the h5. Uh, the h5 pawn will fall. Uh, however, I do think that this uh, is like this is a very hard variation to get into in the first place. I mean, the fact that Black has to find all of these uh, very narrow moves to finally reach this equal endgame is very difficult. I think that it's much easier to mess up uh, the position than. Um, than it looks based on my analysis. So just going back here, I mean, already after f4 here, it's hard to find. Uh, it's it's not easy to find all of these like moves um, to play like e5. I think like e5 in this position. I I don't think it's easy at all to find e5. Um. So yeah, I think that covers this variation pretty extensively. And I'm, I hope I'm like giving some rationale as to why I'm choosing some of these lines compared to uh, other lines. Um, which covers this move, f6, this f6 line, yeah. And so, yeah, this move g6, I think it covers that move. And so we're gonna go into the main of main line, which is the move 97. Uh, the point is that black, uh, I mean, white should not take the bond on g7 because it's actually poisoned. There's actually this move knight g6, after knight f3, knight d7, black will definitely win the uh, win the e5 pawn because um, because white is essentially forced to play uh, queen h6 in this position. I mean, okay, bishop b5 is possible, but queen b6 uh, runs into some technical problems. Uh, and after knight d7, uh, if we play a move like queen h6, then order the e5 pawn falls, and this is definitely not what what white wants. And so here we should play knight f3. And there are a variety of moves that black can definitely choose in this position. Uh, a move like knight f5 can defend g7, but already it's quite vulnerable on uh, on f5. And as usual, we play bishop d3 to uh, threaten to, to take on f5 here. And after h5, queen f4, knight c6, knight c3, uh, knight c7, castles. The knight on f5 actually just doesn't do anything. I mean, it defends g7, but now, now what? Like... Um, it would much prefer to be on g6, for example, and the other knight being on e7, for example. Uh, and let's say after knight g6, queen d2, knight f to h4, trying to exchange one pair of knights, because the knight is quite awkward there. And here we should just trade on h4, um, and then play this move bishop b5, I think, which misplaces the black king. Um, knight b5 here was recommended by Wesley So, but uh, I found after castles b4, bishop b6, and bishop b2. Okay, this is uh, this definitely is playable and gives quite a long-term advantage. Um, but another move that I want to recommend is move bishop b5, which I think is objectively best, which misplaces the king after king b2, uh, king f8, and then this move knight a4, which causes some serious problems. Uh, bishop b7 is kind of forced, and then here we can play f4, and there is definitely some nice initiative here. Um, let's say after a6 here, bishop d3, um, bishop d7, and then b3 here. Um, I think the black, first off, should not take on a4 because it will open up the b file for the rook. And secondly, it's the blacking is misplaced, 
we already played f4 this knight in g6 is uh, not doing anything because uh, we already played f4 this queen knight in h4 is also not, not well placed and so i think this variation is the most promising uh variation that uh white can go for which is what i'm going to try to do this well, yeah which is what i'm going to try to recommend here um so that's not a five uh queen c7 here is quite possible to pressure the e5 pawn uh, following up with knight b6 and knight g6, uh, but we can play first on b4 here, uh, bishop b6 and then bishop d3 because the c2 pawn was hanging. And after knight g6, we play bishop b2, knight c6, and knight bd2, where white is much better again, first off, due to the control of the e5 square, and we're just gonna castle next. For example, uh, castles, okay, first off, we can play queen g3, uh, and we can also, uh, first off, we can consider castling or we can consider h4, h5, which I think uh, gives white some. A nice initiative there. Um, also, yeah, uh, a move like f6 just loses the g6 pawn, so uh, loses uh, the h pawn, for example, on account of bishop takes g6, so that is no good. I guess knight bc6, uh, looks which is quite reasonable, it looks like. We can play b4, bishop b6, and then bishop d3. Um, and after knight g6, bishop b2, I think we can easily transpose after queen c7 to the line that we saw before. But let's talk about a few alternatives. Knight c7, I think we can just play h4 to threaten h5. And after h5, we can play this move queen g5, which takes control over more dark, dark squares. Uh, queen f4, I think, runs into a technical pro problem of <laughs> losing the queen, which I... Yeah, it's already, it's already late here, which I <laughs> completely missed for some reason. Uh, yeah, apologies for that. <laughs> uh, queen g5 here just takes, takes control of the light squares. And after bishop d7, knight c3, Rook c8 and knight b5 here forces the trade off uh, the bishop for the uh, for the knight. If you're getting f8, bishop d3. Uh, white has two bishops, a thorn of a pawn on e5, and pressure on g6. So white is much better in this position. Um, so yeah, uh, and against h5, then we just play queen g3 here. H4 doesn't really do much. We just play queen g4, knight c7, knight c3, where we threaten knight b5 here. So let's say knight f5, we can play also knight e2. Um, yeah, control, uh, preparing like some uh, like control of the D, uh, the um, d4 square. I think that if we play knight b5 here, then um, yeah, a6 here and the f5 square, uh, the d6 square is already covered, so that's no good. Uh, so knight e2 here is best, and after um, bishop d7, we castle. And let's say a black decides to play h3 here. We just play g3, and actually, black has no play on this side of the board because the queen cannot enter any of the light squares. I mean, if the queen could line on g2, then this would be mate, but it's so far off from that uh, dream. And after rook c8 here, which is best, then we can play a4 here, which is a nice move to per to take away the a4, to a the a4 square from the bishop, uh, preventing bishop a4. After a6, b5. Uh, this limits the bishop on d7 nicely. And let's say after a5, bishop a3, uh, white already has a big advantage here. Um, move like bishop c5, we can just trade here and plant maybe one of the knights on d4 or yeah play h3 here uh play rook f1 rook ad1 with a big advantage already um so just going back i think knight c7 is also interesting preparing knight f5 and we definitely don't want to give up the bishop uh without a good reason and so here it's important to play the move queen g5 i think it's the only move to give the advantage and here um i think it's quite difficult for black to move uh to be honest Knight c6, uh, we can just take the pawn on g6 and cause black some serious structural problems. And knight f5 here, uh, white can actually liquidate into a very nice endgame after trade here and take on f5. I mean, this is very easy play, right, after knight c3. I mean, what can what can black do here? Let's say bishop b6, then we just long castle. Knight e7 and knight b5 here with some threats in the position. Black is definitely uh, worse here. And against a5 here, uh, we can just play castles, a b4, a b4, knight e7, and then knight b5 here. Uh, we don't really want to take the pawn because after the trade there on d5, um, black can play bishop e6. And with, and with the bishop air compensation, it's definitely not as clear. Um, but we can play knight b5 here, um, which enters on d6. And let's say after this move, bishop d, knight d6, bishop e6, bishop d4, takes, takes, knight c6, takes, takes. And we get a typical good knight versus bad bishop scenario. Uh, this is a very good endgame for, for white. Um, yeah, we're just going to activate our king there. Um, so, I think that this uh, knight c7 move is not that challenging. 
or this h5 move um already also not something to notice that bishop, mm, yeah castles here just doesn't work because of the three gift here uh but bishop g5 coming winning completely So yeah. Okay, here, queen b6. This is uh, quite a critical variation that we need to know. Um, it's very sharp uh, because white is forced to give up the f2 pawn because queen g3 will be met with knight f5, which is very important. And here we have to play them with bishop d3. But, and this goes into some theory, which a sacrifice with the f2 pawn, but, black, but white is completely fine here. And I think already has a better position. After bishop f2, king e2, White will actually get a big lead in Veltman due to the rook f1 move. And here, black needs to play the move a5 because uh, to anticipate the bishop retreating back and then b4 uh, because b4 might, might come where the bishop is actually trapped there. And so, um, because if yeah, black plays something like knight bc6, then after rook f1, um, and like bishop c5, b4 just uh, wins a piece. Like bishop here, and okay. Yeah, this just wins a piece. Uh, okay, we need to take on d3 first because uh queen b6 knight c1 we, um black is just better i mean just wins the material back but here this is um um winning for white um what still needs to be precise here i uh, find the uh find the only moves uh, find the only moves to consolidate um because there's some threat in the position of uh black just like pushing all these pawns forward and creating some counterplay but here after castles bishop b3 queen c7 we play king f2 uh and after e5 we play the move queen d2, stepping out of e4. And after b6, a4, bishop b7, king g1, rook a c8. Knight e3 here is a nice move because the take uh, taking on here, um, I think taking on here just leads to knight b5. And so uh, after f6, a5 here, uh, white is already um, like essentially winning here. And so this bishop c5 move is uh, not really dangerous. Uh, bishop d4 is no good because we can just play c3 and Let's say if knight e5, then we can just take on d4. Same situation as there. Um, winning a piece. But if bishop takes e5, then we can take on e5 and take on g7, where there's a fork, actually. And let's say knight d3, king and queen h8 here, and then bishop g5 is uh, the best move in this position. Because queen b2, knight d2 is still winning. And if we take here, the problem is that there's always this queen b5 move just winning the rook. And so this bishop g5 move is really nice, I think. Uh, White has a material advantage and has the initiative also uh, with a nice attack there. Um, and knight d4 here is best by the computer, but after knight d4 and queen d4, because of bishop d4 would run to queen g7, I think. No, bishop d4, there's queen f, yeah, queen g7, rook g8, queen f7, and this is obviously no good. Bishop h6 is recommended by the computer, which is pretty crazy, but um, yeah, this seems to be winning. Uh, objectively speaking. And for queen d4 here, uh, we can play queen f3, which x-rays the f7 pawn. So bishop h4, queen f7, king d7, and bishop f4 here is completely winning for uh, for white because black actually can't find like a good move in this position. Rook f8 is not possible. Uh, we're attacking g7 right now. Um, I think something like this already runs into knight c3 and already some ideas of like knight b5 and this is already busted for, busted for black. So essentially this normal looking knight bc6 move is no good. And so black needs to play a5 here. Um, and after rook f1, which is our typical plan, bishop c5, we take on g7 now. Um, if you play a move like knight c3, then uh, which threatens knight e4, black can just play bishop d7, take here, queen f6, rook g2, king g1, knight e6. Okay, and in this variation, um, I found that black had at least equality in this position uh, because of the activity. However, if we go back to this position, we have to play queen g7, rook g8, queen h7. And here, rook g2 is actually a mistake because of this move king d1. And the f7 pawn is actually extremely weak. Um, we're gonna come with knight g5 next, or like knight c3 threatening knight e4. Um, and this is actually already uh, very, very advantageous for, uh, for white. Um, so here, bishop d7 is best uh, just developing. And here, we should play knight c3 here. Uh, if we play move like knight g5, uh, this leads to unclear position because um, black can play knight bc6 and then bring the king to c7. For example, knight f7, knight e4, king e1. Um, I think it's important to play king e1 here um, for some reason. And for knight d5, this actually is a very unclear position. 
Um, there's no forcing variation here that just wins for white or anything, so. Uh, which is why knight c3 here is best, just developing. And again, rook g2, king d1, this is the same situation where g5 is, uh, becomes weak. Um, but after knight a6 here, uh, bishop g5 is a nice move to close down the g file and uh, even at the cost of sacrificing the b2 pawn. Because the b2 pawn cannot be taken here. It's very important. Because there is this move for rook a b1. And uh, first off, queen a3, then there's rook b3 trapping the queen. And if queen takes c3, then there's again rook b3 trapping the queen. So queen b2 cannot be played. Uh -huh. And castles here uh, is uh, the best. And we can play queen h3 here. This is all, like, every th every move of this is Seoul's, like, what's Seoul's recommendation. I need you to keep that in mind. So this is not the result of my own research. Um, and qu after queen h3 here, uh, this just, um, like, steps out of any rook h8 uh, moves um, and also defends the g2 pawn. And a move like rook h8 here um, doesn't really do anything because the rook is not, it's, like, definitely not better on the h file than it was on the g file. And here, um, white can reposition the queen on g4 and, purports, uh, and supports the h4 push where the pass pawn is going to be very strong. Uh, a move like bishop c6 here looks interesting, but here we can just play rook a b1 where we're preparing b4 ideas uh, or just like defending, I mean, just simply, maybe not even b4 ideas, just defending the b4, uh, the b2 pawn. After queen c7, queen g4, king b8 and h4, white is already better here because the outside pass pawn uh, gives uh, what some winning chances although the position is obviously like very very complicated um i i can't guarantee that even if, like if, if i had this position in real game that i'd be able to win this this is like very complicated um but and against king b8 here which is the best move we can play again rook b1 defending the um b2 pawn and a move like queen c7 here um first off it threatened rook takes g5 followed by queen e5 just winning but here we can play queen h4 defending against the threat after rook d8 uh, exiting the pin and also defending the knight um, king d2 here uh, sidesteps uh, and prepares just um, yeah it just it's a lot nicer on the d file stepping away from any like queen e, uh, like yeah any tactics there uh, let's say knight g6 then we play queen e1 here um, where the game is very complex uh, white is up a pawn here but black has a lot of active play um the best move here is rook c8, but a move like bishop b6, uh, we can again play h4, rook, uh, knight c5, queen d2, uh, knight d3, c3, where white is actually consolidating very quickly here and is already better. I think we can already consider a move like a d4 here. Um, and if like a move like d4, then we can move knight e4. I think objectively this is very, very um, good for good for white. Uh, and so here rook c8 is best. Um, try to put some pressure on the c file. Um, but after h4, which is very standard move, um, bishop a7 is best here. Um, because if they take on a3, which looks like just like winning a pawn, we take here, okay, we lose a piece on c3. But we can take on a6 first. After b a6 and b a3, uh, this comes with check, and this changes the whole situation uh, where black is going to be completely busted down a piece. And after bishop a7 here prepares knight c5, we can play queen e2, knight c5, and rook bd1, which where black does not have enough competition for the pawn. Let's say after d4, knight e4, um, knight d3, and a cd3 is very nice. Uh, I think so, uh, like, he missed the fact that uh, knight d3, queen d3 here is like an awful blunder here because of the move knight f4. And I, I didn't even see this in the beginning, but then after the, point, the computer pointer is out, I was like, okay, this makes a lot of sense. Because after bishop f4, bishop b5 just wins the queen. If we take here, then queen c2 just leads to mate at some point, I'm pretty sure. Um, and um, yeah, so we need to play cd3. But in this position, uh, after queen c2, king e1, uh, white, is already, uh, white king is already very safe. The b2 pawn is not under attack. Uh, the engine already says plus 3 advantage. Uh, we have ideas of playing the move like h5 or even like knight f6. And this is completely winning. So, the complications in this variation, I want to just summarize, are very double-edged and very interesting. Although I think it's a lot easier to play with the white pieces, uh, there are definitely some variations that you need to know uh, in this queen b6 line, um, especially this bishop d3 move and just the thematic ideas. But I think uh, overall, uh, this should give 
wide some good winning chances um, in the complex in the complexity of the position. Um, and instead of Kumbi six here, uh, which is very interesting, um, Black can play castles here. Uh, and after Bishop d3, um, we can either play before now or later. But Bishop d3 is the move order uh, recommended again by So. And here, uh, f5 is best. So, knight g6 is possible. Uh, and after castles, knight c6, we can play queen h5 here, which is a very nice move because it threatens first off knight g5. Uh, and also pins the knight on g6 because the h7 pawn is going to be attacked otherwise. Um, a move like queen c7 here, we can play rook e1. And I think after bishop d7, knight b2, bishop b6. And then knight b3 here, a nice maneuver to take control over the d4 square. Uh, let's say a bishop e8 and a queen h3 here. Um, I think that this position is already uh, very, very good for white because white will play bishop e3 next to trade off the bishops. And black is just in general suffering this position. Uh, I think we want to play queen h3 here to get out of any like f6. Uh, and then like this queen being attacked on this diagonal, which is why queen h3 is such a strong move. Um, and so that covers queen c7. Let's talk about bishop d7 here, which just develops. We can play knight bd2 here to prepare some knight b3 ideas, which attacks the bishop on c5 and also takes control of the d4 square. And the bishop e8 here uh, prepares some counterplay with f6, but we're fast enough here to play b4 first, get a, get a tempo. After bishop e7, knight b3, um, we can see queen c7, we just play bishop d2, which is a very nice move. Um, I think that bishop b2 is slightly inferior here. Um, we can consider b5 here, um, but um, for the time being, I think bishop b2 is what is recommended. Um, if you play a move like bishop b2, I think that some move like a5 here is already um, gets black some very good counterplay here and then a4. So that's definitely not what we want to do. And that's why bishop d2 is the best move to prevent any a5 ideas. And so here after h6, um, h6 I think is important um, to prevent any knight g5 ideas. We can play rook a1 and against f5, um, just closing the position, we have to play queen h3, which steps out of the bishop's eye. The point is that if we play ef6 and there's this move rook f6, which is very annoying. Uh, it defends this guy. Uh, e5 is a threat at some point, and that's what is, um, what is already under some pressure. So we play queen h3 here. Um, and a move like knight c5 is already a mistake because we can take on e5 and then play bishop f4, bishop d6, queen g3. Okay, and black can go for this trade, but after knight c5, what is already actually significantly better? A move like bishop h2 is a mistake because it's, the bishop is already in a dubious position in, uh, after king h1. And now there's already the threat of g3. And so a move like e5 is necessary. And here we can just take on d5. Uh, okay, I mean, bishop, bishop f5 is already also very good. Um, but I'm just going to say bishop, uh, queen takes d5 is also good. After uh, bishop f7, we play knight e6, queen e7, king h2, queen e6, takes, takes, and then take the e5 pawn, where we're just going to be uh, a lot better in this endgame due to the active pieces and the weak f5 pawn. Uh, e5 here, um, immediately, instead of bishop h2 and then e5, uh, we can just take on d5 and then play queen b7, where we're just going to be up a pawn in this endgame. e4, bishop a6, rook a c8, knight c5. Um, black does not have enough compensation for the pawn, but uh, the computer says that this is not far from equality. Um, I would generally agree um, with the computer, <laughs> um, but yeah, this is quite pleasant for white. So uh, that covers this um, this line, I think. Uh, and so with Nazi e5, uh, I think a6 is best here, preventing any b5, or, or maybe not actually, maybe net g5 is best. <laughs> maybe that line is probably best, so I should probably just promote that. Um, but a6 here, uh, I just want to display um, the danger in black's position. The danger in black's position is the e6 pawn, which can be taken advantage of after knight bd4. Um, and I think this is already very good for, very good for uh, black here, uh, for white here. I move like g4 here already, uh, very nice. Um, so yeah, this covers this move queen c7. Let's talk about f6 here. Um, this is the black's attempt to get counterplay. I think this is definitely uh, the most resilient try, um, because like the bishop is already in e8, already well positioned to uh, x-ray the queen on h5. 
Um, and here we can play e f6. And this looks like it's dangerous because after bishop f6, this attacks the rook on e1. However, we have this important research of knight g5 with a, uh, with a tactical solution here. Um, because e6 is hanging and h7 is hanging, black is forced to give, to give up the uh, bishop there. And after the exchange of queens, uh, black has central pawns that are very weak. And let's see after h6 here, bishop d2 and e5, uh, which is quite critical. We can just prevent e4 by playing f3. And I think black already has a dubious position. Knight f4 takes takes, rook a e1, rook f7, c4, uh, just undermining the center. And after e4, bishop f2, uh, bishop e2 is a very nice move. Uh, found in this game in the database as you see um if we take on if we take on e4 here the problem is that um i think there's some uh, knight e5 business there and so after c4 and e4 there's bishop e2 um and already move like ef3 is a mistake because of bishop f3 uh and like dc4 is a mistake because bishop d5 takes and takes on e8 completely winning there and knight e5 here was playing the game and after ef uh, cd5 ef3 and gf3 uh, the game continued g5, preventing the f4, and after rook, uh, bishop d, um, okay, I think the game continued bishop d1, knight c4, rook e4, knight d6, rook e6, knight f5, and bishop c2, where white was completely better in this position. Um, so yeah, that's not uh, too good for, for um, black. So we're just going back to this variation with f6. Mm. Yeah, I think this knight g6 move. Uh, again, just remember that uh, we can play castle, knight c6, and then queen h5. Uh, very nice move in this position. And the best move in this position is to play f5 and try to close out the position. Here, uh, I think, okay, taking on f6 is definitely the right call here. Uh, we could consider a move like queen g3 and then try to go for uh, like b4, bishop b2, and then h4, uh, and that kind of plan for sure but i think ef6 is objectively the best and after rook f6 um black immediately immediately wants to play the move e5 here which attacks the queen and also threatens e4 um so here we should play queen h5 for sure and this threatens first off the h7 pawn um and if we move like okay first off knight f5 just loses the bishop g5 so that's no good um, and if the move like g6 is played, then this weakens all the dark squares. And after queen h4, uh, rook takes f3. Um, black can try this exchange sacrifice, but I don't think it's uh, very threatening. Gf3, knight bc6, bishop h6, which threatens queen f6, queen e8, knight c3, knight e5, and the castle's long here. Um, and obviously here, I think knight f3 already, uh, yeah, queen g3 is actually best, which gives... Um, some attacking chances. I mean, it's probably just decisive here. Um, and knight d3 is here as best, and after rook d3, knight f5, queen g5. Um, black does not have an, enough compensation for the exchange uh, because we are going to play h4, h5 next. And after bishop e7, queen d2, b6, rook e1, uh, we're targeting black center here. So a move like bishop a6 would already run into rook takes d5 here. And let's see after yeah, bishop a6, rook d5, e d5, and bishop queen d5 here. King h8, and then there's this brilliant move, rook e7, where queen e7 would lose the rook, and knight e7 would run to queen e5, with mate to come. And so this move on g6 is very weakening, and in general, it's not. It's definitely something that black wants to avoid. And so best here is to play h6, um, and we can here castle, and um, a natural move like knight b6 doesn't defend, uh, doesn't prevent the b4 push, which will gain tempo after b4, bishop d6, bishop b2, and e5, uh, we actually have this move b5 which gains advantage uh, because we are attacking the rook on f6 and if it retreats then um yeah then we can possibly just pile up pressure with rook e1 or uh the engine already recommends like bishop h7 or b5 yeah this is already very good after e5 here b5 we're just uh, we have an advantage there and so bishop d6 here um is best uh to prepare some e5 ideas possibly and here, um, I've tried to make b4 work, at least to some sharp play, but I don't think black has any uh, problems uh, with the complications. Let's say after this variation, five takes rook f4. Yeah, the computer says that this is like uh, about equal, and this is there are some complications here that I want to avoid, uh, this being one of them. 
Uh, Seavor is quite possible. Uh, tried against Grandelius in um, 2021, but YCSO recommend on bishop d2 to prepare bishop c3. And um, I do recommend buying his course because I think that I've taken enough lines from him uh, already. Um, being the length, uh, the, the length of this video is like insanely long and I've taken so many lines from him that I don't think that I should continue. Um, so I think that uh, if you want to check out these variations, um, then you should definitely buy his course. Um, essentially in this variation, knight d7 is the best move because it's uh, more versatile to prepare knight f6. Meanwhile, knight bc6 doesn't do much uh, against white setup here and um, what should be better there. And already objective, I mean, if we see optically from this position, with the bishop coming to c3, knight bd2, um, the control over e5 is already massive. And as usual in this position, in this um, what Vinnick called variation, if we take control of the e5 square, then we're going to be very, very happy. Um, yeah, in general. So I think that's going to be it for me. Um, I don't want to make this video uh, any longer than it needs to be. Um, and the PGN, very, uh, the PGN of this, um, of all my analysis below, um, will exclude some of the lines that Wasiso recommends um, because I do think that is important to support uh, the creators of uh, those analysis. Um, so yeah, uh, this main line uh, of this variation that you see right now on the board uh, will be in this course and you should definitely buy that. I think in conclusion, white, uh, black does not, uh, okay, maybe black objectively equalizes in some of the complications and the complicated lines, but um, white has uh, definitely a more uh, preferable position there. Um, and I think my results in the advanced variation, even without knowing so much theory, um, already shows that, um, yeah, it's a lot more comfortable to play the white side of this advanced variation. Um, in the next video, I'm gonna cover the bishop f5 variation in the advanced uh, Karakhan. Um, there are a lot of uh, different setups that black can choose in that variation, which is why I consider it so uh, dangerous, um, yeah, mainly so dangerous, and it's not that uh, in that variation I'm going to talk about more in the future. It's not that black uh, has like a massive initiative and white is under attack or anything, but I think that uh, the main lines uh, have been tested and proven to be quite reasonable for black. Um, I will uh, make a video on that possibly in like a week or two. Um, yeah, there are some life things going on right now. Um, so I'm preparing for uh, yes, a new stage of my life after this, because I just finished my exams for third year. Um, if you want to um, recommend or suggest um, a topic or an opening that you want some analysis on, then please uh, just comment down below. Um, I'm working on, or also, I'm also working on like um, analyzing a 1C4, so the English opening. Uh, from the white side, even though I've essentially, um, I've, I, I've played this sometimes in Blitz, but not very seriously. And I think that um, this is like a possibly good exercise for me to um, see what kind of analysis I can bring to the table. Uh, I've, yeah, so I'm just gonna update uh, you guys on that series and I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. So um, please stay safe and have fun playing chess everyone. Bye-bye.